Chapter 2461, Nine Mortal Steps, Seven Steps Nine Palace Crush Ching Shui's words caused the people on the opposite side of the door to feel infuriated. The person in the lead was a middle-aged man who bore some resemblance to He Fan. Right now, that man was looking at Ching Shui with fury in his eyes, just like a ferocious beast wanting to rip apart its prey. Kid, do you know who you're talking to? The man's tone was very cold. Are you very famous? Because I really have no idea. Oh, right. You haven't answered my question earlier. What are you guys here for? Ching Shui gave a natural smile and said, You've killed a member of the He Clan. No one can save you. I'll let you know what a foolish thing you've done. The middle-aged man said this and walked towards Ching Shui. His movement was very unique, having a strange rhythm. As he advanced, an intense pressure pressed forth. With each step he took, his strength would be raised by a notch. Mortal Steps? These were the Mortal Steps, the ultimate skill unique to the mortal cities he clan. It was a popular legacy and was also what the He Clan relied on to establish their standing in the mortal city. He is He Yining, a core member of the He Clan and one of the experts of his generation. His name in the He Clan is also well known, someone exclaimed. So he's He Yining. Twenty years ago, he wiped out an entire clan for a woman. If a man would do that for me, I'll definitely marry him. A plump lady said intoxicatedly. Woman, take a look at yourself. This won't happen unless the other party is blind. A man who was like a skinny monkey smiled and said, Mph, I wouldn't fancy the person if he were a monkey like you. You'll be crushed easily. What can you do with that small body of yours? The fat lady looked at the skinny man in despise. What do you know? This is toned. The skinny man raised his head and said, Toned? It probably won't be long before you die from being too toned. The fat lady threw a glance toward the man's lower half and commented, this man was very strong. Ching Shui realized that there were quite a number of people at the Nurture God Realm in the Mortal City. With each increasing tier to the Nurture God Realm, the difference in strength would be very great. Moreover, the man should be at Tier 5 of the Nurture God Realm, having extremely commanding strength. This was in addition to his mortal steps. Ching Shui had no choice but to take this seriously. However, Ching Shui still had aces up his sleeves and thus wasn't anxious. He struck out a dragon capturing hands to start his assault. Roar? A loud dragon's roar rang out, and a huge golden dragon charged out toward He Yining, baring its teeth and claws. Pa? Ching Shui's attack's purpose was primarily trying to cut off his mortal steps. He Yining had demonstrated the nine mortal steps. Ching Shui had no idea exactly what level He Yining could bring out from the nine mortal steps. He Yining stiffened and a fiery gleam shot out from his eyes as a huge human figure appeared behind him. Our He Clan is the dominator over the mortal city, standing on the shoulders of giants. Give it another try. He Yining's deep voice rang out and he once again charged out toward Ching Shui. Violent auras were gushing like tidal waves, filling up the place rapidly. Ching Shui felt as if he had sunk into a great swamp. At this moment, He Yining struck out a punch in return. Our He Clan's battle techniques are all ordinary battle techniques that use the simplest moves. They are also the most effective, the strongest, the fastest, and the most miraculous attacks. Boom! Violent strength caused Ching Shui's body to keep on being pushed back. It was a strange power and his movements were very unusual. He was still using the mortal steps. Although he was unable to bring them to its greatest level, he could instantly perform the first three parts. This, in addition to the fact that he was at level 5 of the Nurture God Realm, made it so that his attack was a force to be reckoned with. Taiki? Ching Shui was using his current version of Taiki. Ever since the previous episode, he had gone through a swift advancement in his mastery of Taiki, out of which he was able to utilize the ability to reduce inflicted damage well. That, coupled with his own body's status, as well as the Divine Weapon Flying Sword's ability, he was able to go up against this opponent unscathed. However, He Yining's strength was nothing to scoff at. It was the unique trait for the mortal legacy. Everything was in pursuit of strength and speed. Due to the terrifying strength and speed, their bodies would also be very powerful. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to withstand their speed and strength. Fierce attack? Boom! He Yining moved at a rapid pace and his aura rose rapidly, as if wanting to split the world apart. Combination battle technique? Ching Shui struck out in rapid succession and his body was also attacking rapidly with a primordial strike. 
Ching Shui had learned the primordial strike from the golden primordial bear's mind. His mastery of it hadn't matured yet. However, this attack was a combination of attack and defense. Most importantly, the attack was very domineering. The harshest thing about this was that performing the primordial strike required one to have a powerful body. Else, the user would be at risk of having their body explode. Boom, Ching Shui was pushed back while He Yining had blood dripping out from the corners of his lips. The surroundings were very quiet, with everyone in disbelief. To think that this young man had beaten up He Yining to the extent that he had spurted blood. He Yining was an absolute genius and had great status in the He clan. He was a core pillar amongst those in his generation. Who was this young man and what was his background? To think that he would have such terrifying skills. What kind of influence would have the capabilities of nurturing such an outstanding junior? Excellent. I've misjudged you. However, you better watch out now. With a flash, He Yining disappeared, leaving only that terrifying giant. The giant that had been like a shadow previously, and had now taken on a material form, which was akin to a small mountain. It was strong and violent, emitting a ferocious aura. Boom, its huge arm came smashing down with a force that could split a mountain. Ching Shui didn't take it on forcibly. They were outside the manor and during the battle, Ching Shui had walked out of the formation. There was a wide path outside the door. This attack had created a huge crater on the special stone surface, throwing seething smoke as well as sand and debris into the sky. Ching Shui shook his head. The other party's strength and body were very tough. It was the strongest existence that Ching Shui had encountered amongst all the other refined entities he had encountered so far. As expected of the mortal legacy. Primordial strike? Boom boom. Ching Shui was now at the fourth level of the nurture god realm. It was a demarcation between the third and the fourth level. Ching Shui's defense was absolutely stunning, and thus decided to go ahead with a straightforward collision. It was just a single strike, the primordial strike. This attack was domineering and kept on clashing with that giant. The world turned dark. The sun and moon were dim. Violent auras caused the clouds in the sky to seethe. Boom, both He Yining and Ching Shui backed off. However, He Yining smiled and looked at Ching Shui, young man, you aren't bad. You're the most formidable person I've encountered. But it's time to settle this. His huge figure leaped up and moved with a mysterious footwork. Nine mortal steps. Ching Shui's countenance was grim and advanced with reverse steps, stopping the other party at a strange spot. First step, first step, Ching Shui advanced in accordance to the rhythm of He Yining's huge figure. The nine mortal steps. He Yining had mastered up to the seventh step and this was already starting to become dangerous. Seventh step, having amassed explosive powers, He Yining wanted to strike out his strongest attack toward Ching Shui. Seven steps nine palace crush. Ching Shui's seventh step landed. Suddenly, the entire world seemed as if it had collapsed. The powers from He Yining's huge figure became like a huge balloon that had been pierced with a hole, leaking crazily. Chapter 2462, Killing He Yining, Interspatial Bangle. Boom, Ching Shui's kick stumped down on He Yining's chest, throwing him down towards the ground. A hint of blood once again leaked out from the corners of He Yining's lips. Previously, he Yining had also raised his strength to the extreme. At that moment, his body was overwhelmingly powerful. Therefore, even though Ching Shui's attack was also very strong, it had barely managed to injure He Yining. The latter's injuries weren't too severe, but it was his nine mortal steps that had been interrupted. Boom, Ching Shui's figure went crashing down and he stumped down abruptly once again. Tiger tail whip kick, the hidden force damaged without leaving any trace. Ching Shui's hidden force had a soft strength that was comparable to that of a merger between one's spirit energy and physical body. When Ching Shui performed it, he targeted specific parts of He Yining's body. Golden Giant? He Yining's figure suddenly rose up to become a huge golden giant that looked like it had been cast with a layer of gold. His aura gave off the impression that it could engulf mountains, rivers, the sun, and the moon. A golden fog rose up slowly like a gold-colored ocean. Roar? He Yining let out a huge bellow and the violent aura on his body swelled up as if he were King Kong. Scary looking sharp teeth filled up his mouth and he charged out toward Ching Shui with a loud battle cry. A long stream of the Golden River was pulled out from the Golden Fog as He Yining's huge figure shot out towards Ching Shui, just like a shining golden sun. Ching Shui was speechless. This was the mortal legacy. What mortal could be so powerful?
It was no wonder it had a long legacy in the mortal city, allowing them to dominate over the mortal city. This was a mortal who stood on the shoulders of the gods themselves. Weakening, weakening, Ching Shui kept on weakening his opponents incessantly. He circulated his strength to the maximum and performed the wind whisk willow, using both of his hands, even if he had suffered injuries. He would use either hitting a cow through a mountain or pushing force to negate the opponent's attacks. If he yinning wasn't weakened, Ching Shui had the feeling that it would probably be very difficult for him to fend off He Yining's attacks. Ching Shui knew that it was hard for him to extract anything further from He Yining. Rather than saying extract, it could be said as a form of tempering for himself. It would be even better if he could get his hands on the mortal legacy. The mortal legacy had strong oppression over humans. Stellar transposition? Ching Shui didn't continue to drag things on and decided to try out the stellar transposition. Right now, Ching Shui's defense had reached 260 trillion after he had attained a breakthrough to the fourth level of the Nurture God realm. After being weakened, the strength of He Yining's giant status shouldn't be weaker than Ching Shui's defense. If Ching Shui hadn't applied weakening on him then it would be slightly higher. Ching Shui's blinding assault that could completely negate the opponent's defense struck out with a visual impact that was like the Milky Way or the setting sun. He Yining's eyes were agape as he sensed the death threat. He did his best to dodge the attack. Pa, a loud and crisp explosive sound rang out and He Yining's body was sent flying. The huge giant cracked upon impact. The giant was comparable to a small mountain but Ching Shui's stellar transposition was like overturned rivers. Boom, the golden giant smashed onto a flattened a small mountain that wasn't far away. This was a prosperous land that relied on the mountains and rivers in the area. Therefore, the more prosperous a piece of land in the nine continents were the more one could see mountains in the surroundings. However, most of these mountains weren't very big and only people with great statuses would be able to have such strong vigor. He Yining was at the last of his breath. Ching Shui's attack had been too harsh and his internal organs had been basically shattered. He Yining's weakness was that his internal organs weren't strong enough. However, after he became the golden giant, he had the most sturdy physical body. If it weren't for the fact that Ching Shui's attack could completely ignore the opponent's defense, it would have been nothing to He Yining. There were many abilities in this world that could ignore the opponent's defense. However, most of the good ones could only ignore 30% of the opponent's defense. Even so, such a level would still be nothing to He Yining. What He Yining hadn't expected was that Ching Shui's attack could ignore his defense completely. He Yining had an item that was like a bangle with him and there wasn't any sight of an interspatial silk sachet. Ching Shui picked up the bangle. If such a violent power couldn't destroy this bangle then Ching Shui was certain that it was an interspatial bangle. Therefore, he decided to keep it. With He Yining's death, the remaining people were scared out of their wits. He Yining was the strongest amongst those who had come. However, the person who was considered to be a core pillar in the He clan had perished. There was silence. It was so quiet that it felt extremely strange. Leave. I don't wish to kill so many people. Ching Shui waved his hand and chased them off. Just you wait. The He clan won't leave things be, someone said. If you were to say another word, you can forget about leaving. Ching Shui threw a glance in that person's direction. As expected, the person shut up. This time around, He Yining was just down on his luck. The He clan didn't put Ching Shui and his group in high regard, and didn't send He Yining here. He Fan was He Yining's nephew in name, but was in fact his son. Of course, there were very few who knew about this. This was the reason why He Yining had come in such great fury. What he hadn't expected was that he would follow He Fan's footsteps. All of the remaining people quickly scattered off after Ching Shui told them to leave. He Yining's death would definitely make the He clan pay another visit and the next one would be even rowdier. It was certain that they would come. If they didn't challenge Ching Shui again to regain their standing, the He clan's status in the mortal city as the domineering party would waver. Ching Shui turned to see that the others were all standing at the entrance. He smiled and beckoned for everyone to head back. He wasn't very worried. Right now, he wasn't a pushover. Moreover, he still had his formations. Ching Shui believed that as long as he stayed here, there would be no one in the mortal city who would be able to force their way into the manor. The formation I stone's great power had caused the formations to be a little heaven-defying. There are quite a number of old characters in the He clan and their strength is very terrifying. With He Yining's death, there will definitely be quite a number of them who would come out. Niu Lan looked at Ching Shui and said, 
It's fine, don't worry. Just go ahead with your cultivation as usual. They won't be able to do anything to me. In the worst case scenario, I can just stay here and they won't be able to barge in. Ching Shui smiled and said. Everyone knew of Ching Shui's ability with formations and didn't doubt his words. Right now, they could be said to have a blind faith toward Ching Shui. Ching Shui was also busy with his own cultivation, but he suddenly thought of He Yining's interspatial bangle and brought it out. In the past, he had gotten his hands on a number of interspatial silk sachets, but now, he had reached a different realm. Therefore, he didn't touch many of the items after throwing them a quick glance. Although there were many items that other people might think weren't bad, they were nothing to Ching Shui. However, things were clearly different with He Yining's case. Therefore, Ching Shui still held some anticipation to see what He Yining had in it. Not bad, there are some really useful items. Ching Shui saw some precious medicinal herbs as well as medicine bottles. Other than those, there were also weapons, armor, and the likes, such as some unique ores and stones. There were many things and they were neatly sorted. The space in this interspatial bangle was quite big. There are battle technique manuals in this thing. Ching Shui was surprised to see quite a number of beast leather books. He took them out. Skybear fist art, violent fist, strengthened palm. Ching Shui picked up a book, took a glance, and then tossed it to the side before reaching for another one. There were quite a number of battle techniques here that were known to be of quite a good quality. However, Ching Shui didn't care for them. He took out another book and after seeing the few words written on it, he was stunned. Nine Mortal Steps This was a book made from golden beast leather and had golden pages. It was extremely sturdy and emitted faint spiritual chi. This meant that the quality of these pages wasn't low. Chapter 2463 Learning the Mortal Steps the He Clan comes to break formation. Ching Shui was agitated when he saw the Nine Mortal Steps. He had the thought of learning it, but didn't expect to be able to obtain its manual. Moreover, this looked like the original version. This meant that He Yining's status in the He Clan was definitely quite significant. At the very least, he must have some high position. Ching Shui didn't head to read it anxiously but instead looked through some other battle technique manuals. MMM, another one. Ching Shui smiled happily. This was a book with golden pages. There were only five words on it. Giant golden spiritual figure. At first sight, Ching Shui knew that this was the golden giant that He Yining had released earlier. These two should be the most important martial techniques of the mortal legacy. How did they end up with He Yining? Moreover, these were the original versions. Ching Shui couldn't understand even after giving it a lot of thought and thus decided to not think about it. He picked up the nine mortal steps and started reading it. He immediately sank into it. It was at the absolute paragon and was too domineering. Mortals could rely on this to take on the world. It was one of the most terrifying martial techniques that could cause their strengths to surge. The nine mortal steps should be ranked amongst the top few even across the entire nine continents. Ching Shui had no idea if there were other mortal legacies elsewhere. However, he felt that the mortal who had left the place shouldn't have just left just one thing behind. Time passed by slowly and Ching Shui kept on cultivating the nine mortal steps. True to its name, there were nine steps. With each step taken, one strength would increase by 50%. In principle, after taking the nine steps, one strength would increase by four and a half times. However, the manual stated that if one were to cultivate the nine mortal steps to the highest realm, this wouldn't be all one would receive. The footwork had a lot of minor and complicated details. Most importantly, with each step forward, the energy depletion would increase by 50%. It was on the same level as the strength increment. Moreover, the stronger one's body was, the greater the unleashed prowess and the longer the duration lasted. The one unique trait of the nine mortal steps was that no matter how many steps a person took or how much strength increase they received, the person would only be able to unleash one attack. After the one attack, they would have to start all over again. During this process, the origin qi depletion would be especially fast. One step, two steps. With Ching Shui's current realm, in addition to him having his heavenly vision technique, it wouldn't be hard for him to first analyze this technique and then subsequently learn it from the previous battle. The realm of the Violet Jade Immortal provided him with plenty of time and by the time it was time for him to leave, Ching Shui could already take three steps. After exiting the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal, Ching Shui made multiple copies of the nine mortal steps and gave everyone a copy. 
This thing was very good. Everyone was astonished at the sight of the nine mortal steps. This was something that one might not even be able to get his hands on even if he were to wipe out the entire He clan. To think that they managed to get it. Everyone looked at Ching Shui agitatedly. They couldn't understand what was going on. This was found in He Yining's interspatial bangle. When the He clan finds out that He Yining is dead, they'll definitely come to take back this nine mortal steps. This is the basis for their foundation, what they relied on to become a unique and extraordinary existence. If everyone were to get their hands on the nine mortal steps, then the He clan would naturally fall into decline. Ching Shui smiled. Could it be that you're going to disseminate the nine mortal steps? Niu Lan looked at Ching Shui, puzzled. We don't have any feuds with the He clan, but we've killed He Yining and He Fan. To the He clan, the nine mortal steps is a lot more important compared to the two of them. I think that they'll be willing to have a talk with us. Ching Shui gave it some thought before saying. You want to settle this peacefully? Hao Tian asked. I'm still hesitating. Ching Shui shook his head. Even if the He clan agrees to have a talk with you, they'll definitely come after us after you've given them the nine mortal steps. If the nine mortal steps were to spread out, they'd probably go all out, even if it they have to wipe out the entire city. Ling Chen frowned and said. Then for the sake of other people's safety, don't spread it out. But we mustn't return this nine mortal steps to them. If we just return it to them, they'll definitely not let us off. They should have some reservations now. Ching Shui smiled and said. Hee hee, let's just let them feel anxious and not return it to them. The He clan aren't good people anyway. Tang Shi smiled. Then go ahead and learn it. We have formations set up so it's basically impossible for them to attack their way in here. Everyone should take this time and work hard to cultivate. Ching Shui gave everyone some spirit gathering pills to increase the effects of their cultivation. At noon, quite a number of people arrived. This time around, there were more people compared to before, and most of them were important characters in the He clan. The ones in the lead were ten or so old men. The matter had become too big this time around and the problem of He clan's legacy was involved. Therefore, they surrounded the manor that Ching Shui was in, leaving no room for escape. Old ancestors, there are formations around this place. Shall we inform them to come out to have a talk first? A middle-aged man said respectfully to the few elders. Break this formation and give them a piece of our mind first. This will make the negotiations smoother. A prestigious-looking old man said in a deep voice. The old man wore plain clothes and looked very normal. However, he emitted a violent aura and his eyes were deep and cold. There was a hint of killing intent amidst his elderly vibe making others feel extremely uncomfortable. He had a pair of emotionless eyes. Yes, old ancestor. Break the formation. The middle-aged man waved his hand. Some formation masters came out and started moving and probing around. The moment they got close, they would be reflected away. The powerful aura made it hard for them to get close. It didn't take long for these formation masters to be all battered. There were even two of them whose arms had been fractured and were spurting blood. Useless things. Scram back here. The old man bellowed angrily. He had wanted to teach Ching Shui a lesson, but wasn't expecting that the formation masters who had been using the clan's resources lavishly all this while were so useless. The more he thought about it, the angrier he felt. He slapped out his palm toward one of the formation masters. Boom. A rain of blood came falling down. The old man's brutal means left all the remaining formation masters shivering incessantly. They didn't even dare to breathe too loudly and their clothes were drenched in cold sweat. Old ancestor, don't be angry. I'll lead some people and attempt to break the formation, the middle-aged man said carefully. All right, you long. You go and give it a try. The old man's voice became a little softer. The middle-aged man was called He Yulong and he was considered to be quite strong in the He clan. He was from the same generation as He Yining. Although his status wasn't as high as this generation's clan's head and he yinning, he yulong was still considered to enjoy a good status in the clan. Fifty people stood orderly and stepped forward together. The positions they took were very strange and then they started to advance uniformly. Mortal steps? He yulong stood at the very front while the others followed behind him. A wave of violent power gathered together and flowed between them, forming a circulating origin chi chain. Second step? Third step? These people were all He clan's pillars and they had already cultivated the nine mortal steps to the seventh step. Fourth step, fifth step. The several tens of people in the surroundings had formed something like mystical clouds, blurring everyone's vision. 
Sixth step, seventh step, with the seventh step, violent power went smashing out like a hammer through the men, a stream of violent and unrivaled colorful chi like a huge sword, yet also like a small river, pierced out toward the formation. Break. He Ulam let out an enraged bellow and sent his attacks smashing fiercely onto the formation with an overwhelming prowess. Boom. A loud and terrifying voice rang out, creating explosions that sent up colorful clouds. Several tens of people were sent flying back. Most of them suffered internal injuries, with a few of them being severely injured. He Yulong, who had stood at the very front, was one who had been seriously injured. Chapter 2464, Making Threats and Temptations, Using Art Scroll to Destroy Formation. This unexpected occurrence caused those old men to be astonished. He Yulong didn't manage to destroy the formations but instead was repelled and inflicted with serious injuries. Previously, the old men had all thought that it would be a breeze for He Yulong and the group to destroy the formation given their impetus. Even they wouldn't have been able to fend off He Yulong's group. This nine mortal steps that was used as a group was especially effective to break into cities, break formations, or attack an immobile target. However, it would take an especially long time to prepare and there were strong restraints. Therefore, it was basically very hard for one to use the nine mortal steps this way in battles. This wasn't the first time that He Yulong had used this method to break formations. It was even more effective compared to deploying formation masters. Many a time, when even formation masters were unable to break the formations, they would rely on the nine mortal steps as a big group to break the formations. This was something that the He clan was very proud of. The mortal legacy was perfect in their hearts, being able to accomplish anything. The He clan's position in the mortal city had been passed down for very long, all thanks to the mortal legacy. At this moment, Ching Shui walked out. He looked at the many people outside and knew what the situation was. He smiled and said, I'll make sure that the person who destroys my formation suffers tragically. A faint smile and murderous gaze caused the surroundings to fell silent. If it was said that previously many people were unable to accept this then right now, everyone knew that he was the one who had set up the formations. How could a person who could set up such a terrifying formation be a simple character? If one were to offend him, he could trap you in your house until your death. Young man, were you the one to kill members of our He clan? The prestigious-looking young man looked at Ching Shui and said calmly, I don't know who they are, but some evil people wanted to kill me. However, it turned out that I still lack control and accidentally killed two of them. Ching Shui seemed to give some thought before saying, Ching Shui's attitude caused He Lianba's fury to rise up. He had the strong urge to slap Ching Shui to death. However, He Lianba knew that the most important thing at the moment was to get back the nine mortal steps and the giant golden spiritual figure. These two things mustn't be leaked. We have no ill intent. How about we have a talk? He Lianba tried hard to lower his attitude. Haha, no ill intent? With so many of you here, you're saying that you have no ill intent? If you don't have any ill intent, then why are you destroying my formations? Ching Shui spat out, not showing them any face. You. He Lianba's face turned black. He was a person who enjoyed great status and when had he ever been treated in this manner? However, he told himself to bear with it and to only take care of Ching Shui after they had gotten back the nine mortal steps and the giant golden spiritual figure. Then, he'd make Ching Shui suffer a fate worse than death. All right, you guys can go back. Don't come and disturb me, otherwise, I won't be holding back. Ching Shui turned and was about to leave. Brother, I'm very sincere. We're from the He clan and I'm He Lianba. Two of my family members have died and we wish to take back their stuff. He Lianba said seriously. I'm sorry, I don't have anything here. Ching Shui waved his hand. You're really not planning on handing them over? Those things belong to our He clan and are very useful to us. We can use other things to trade for them. Medicinal pills that can bring a person back to life and let their bodies regenerate or divine artifacts, take your pick. We guarantee that we won't make things hard on you after you hand over those things. Otherwise, our He clan will fight you to the bitter death even if both sides will suffer casualties. He Lianba threw out threats and temptations in addition to lowering his attitude. Ching Shui smiled, I really don't have them. I want divine artifacts and miraculous medicine as well but I really don't have the things you've mentioned. Am I supposed to randomly find something and trade it with you? Young man, we're all aware of the truth. Those people who returned saw you taking that interspatial bangle. 
He Lianba stared into Ching Shui's eyes and said, Oh, I remember that now, you were referring to that? I gave it to a child to play with because I saw that it looked very nice. I've already given to a child. If I ask for it back, the kid will cry. Ching Shui rubbed his forehead and said this, as if he was at a loss. Right now, He Lianba had the urge to spurt blood. He tried hard to calm himself down. He knew that this kid wasn't as innocent as he appeared to be. When he saw Ching Shui's innocent gaze, he had the feeling that this kid was very crafty. However, there was nothing he could do for now. Maybe the kid will look for another pretty looking item, so try to trade these for the one with the kid. He Lianba tossed Ching Shui a pair of bangles. They were very valuable and beautiful jade bangles. However, they were merely bangles and were worthless to cultivators. These bangles could only be sold for common money. Ching Shui took them and smiled. This old man must be senile. He had only mentioned that a kid had asked for it, thinking that it looked pretty. To think that the old man would hand him something else that looked even nicer to get him to return the previous one. He merely thought of this in passing. Pa, Ching Shui crushed that pair of beautiful jade bangles into dust. I almost forgot. Before you guys came, a large bird came and took it away. I'm unable to return it to you. Enough. He Lianba's body fluctuated slightly. Although he was still able to remain calm, everyone could tell that he wasn't feeling calm in his heart. Everyone knew that Ching Shui was just toying with them. At the beginning, they could only play along with him, but having been fooled to such a degree, there wasn't a need for them to hold it in anymore. I'll ask one more time. Will you hand them over or not? He Lianba said in a cold voice. I'm tired. I'll go back and take a nap. Please feel free. Ching Shui turned and left. He Lianba was so infuriated that he was steaming up. He watched as Ching Shui's figure disappeared. Break the formation? Break the formation? I want this formation broken regardless of the price. He Lianba bellowed out. One of the few elderly men took out something like an art scroll. It was silver in color and filled with divine spiritual chi. He walked up next to He Lianba and said, Elder brother, are we really going to be using this? There's no room for reservations. We must break the formation. We mustn't lose the mortal legacy. He Lianba gritted his teeth and said. That old man nodded and held on to that art scroll that was three feet long and one feet wide. It was filled with a holy aura and as the old man waved his hand, the art scroll floated up above the formation. A hint of snow white glow shone down and the formation started to disintegrate at a speed that could be seen by the naked eye. Ching Shui looked at the art scroll and was taken by surprise. This thing was so mysterious. What on earth was it? To think that it could engulf his formation as if it was eating something and wanted to devour the formation entirely. It was fine for the formation to be gone. Ching Shui got everyone to stand on guard. The formation was broken after the time for an incense to burn. The art scroll in the sky also disappeared. Young man, are you going to hand over that bangle now? He Lianba's tone now got back some of his dominance. I've told you, I won't hold back against the person who destroy my formation. Clearly, you guys didn't take my words seriously. Ching Shui looked coldly at He Lianba as he walked out. You've guts. Young man, it's an easy feat for me to flatten this place. He Lianba wasn't sure if the nine mortal steps and the giant golden spiritual figure were on Ching Shui. He didn't wish to take action right away for fear that he might not be able to find the nine mortal steps and giant golden spiritual figure after killing these people. You won't hold back? Young man, come on, let me see how capable you are. Oh, right, your formation isn't bad. How about it, are you interested to join our He clan? You'll be able to enjoy beauties, wealth, glory, riches, status, and respect. You won't have to do anything except to set up a few formations here and there occasionally. He Lianba smiled and said. He was starting with his threats and temptations again. Why, do you doubt He Clan's capabilities? Our He Clan dominates over the mortal city and after joining us, you'll earn respect and soar to great heights immediately. He Lianba emphasized on the He Clan's status. Chapter 2465, The He Clan's Old Ancestor Can Deal Ching Shui An Instant Kill. Ching Shui wasn't some cheeky lad and had met many people in his life. He was able to see the killing intent deep in He Lianba's eyes. Right now, He Lianba was merely restraining himself. It was just like how Ling Chen had said. Once they gave He Lianba the nine mortal steps and giant golden spiritual figure, this old man would definitely wipe out Ching Shui and everyone else at any cost. 
He Lianba's promise was actually a great temptation to many people in the mortal city. It was something that one couldn't get no matter how hard he fought to get his hands on it. This was also why he Lianba had the right to feel so confident as he gave this promise. It's a pity that I don't have any intentions to join anyone. I'll say it one more time, I don't have the thing that you guys mentioned. I won't pursue the matter of you having destroyed my formation. Now leave. Ching Shui waved his hand like he was pretending to be someone beyond his own capabilities. Since that's the case, there's no point in talking anymore. Don't blame us for being ruthless. He Lianba's countenance was extremely grim. Old ancestor, there's no need to use a butcher's knife to kill a chicken. Let me kill him. A young man walked out. He Tian, don't be too careless. Go on. He Lianba gave it some thought before saying. He Tian was the top genius amongst the younger generation in the He clan, an existence that He Fan wouldn't be able to catch up to no matter how hard he tried. Moreover, despite his young age, he had already surpassed He Yining. He was the oldest amongst those in He Fan's generation, and slightly younger compared to He Yining. However, he was in his prime and was over twice as old as Qing Shui. He Tian stood tall and straight, looked handsome, and appeared to be a righteous person. His eyes were spirited and there was a hint of sharpness deep inside. He was very manly and was the dream lover for many women in the mortal city. After seeing He Tian, Qing Shui felt even more puzzled why the nine mortal steps and giant golden spiritual figure would be with He Yining. Make your move. Otherwise, you won't get a chance to do so later. He Tian smiled as he looked at Qing Shui confidently and said, Are you sure you want me to make a move first? Qing Shui took a few steps forward. I'm certain. He Tian continued to say confidently. Qing Shui had already circulated his strength to the peak long from the moment they had entered. Therefore, he struck out with his emperor's chi outright. The emperor's chi affected an area, and therefore everyone opposing him was weakened by 20%. He Tian frowned slightly, but his brows relaxed and he took a step forward using the nine mortal steps. His nine mortal steps was very fast, deep and profound, different from He Yining's. Qing Shui struck out with a Taiki single whip. Pa! He Tian made his move as well, accurately clashing with Qing Shui's hand. Second step? He Tian wasn't cut off by Qing Shui and took another step forward, completing the second step of the mortal steps. Qing Shui swayed from the other party's attack and was surprised. The other party was very strong. This was only He Tian's second step and He Tian had merely struck out casually earlier. This was how terrifying the nine mortal steps was. With each additional step, the user's strength would increase by quite a lot. Therefore, even a casual strike would have great power. As long as the nine mortal steps wasn't cut off, with each additional step taken, one would be able to strike once without causing the increased strength to disappear. For example, when one's realm had reached the seven nine mortal steps, they would be able to have a chance to strike each time from the first, second, third, all the way to the seventh step without losing the strength increment. However, the moment they struck twice, the steps taken from earlier would all disappear. Attacking after taking the last step would also cause the prior steps to disappear and the person would have to start all over again. He Tian struck once on his second step, and thus his mortal steps wasn't cut off and he continued to take another step. Third step? The strength on his body increased tremendously again and he slapped out a palm toward Qing Shui. Mortal's palm, one hand cover sky. Even a mere mortal can cover up the sky with one hand. This palm strike was violent and domineering, coming with a powerful disposition. It made He Tian appear elegant yet strong. At that moment, the glory of this mortal wouldn't lose out to even celestials. Buddha Wisdom Seal? Qing Shui formed seals with his two hands and struck out a huge golden Buddha onto He Tian. He Tian's disposition was extremely strong at the moment. The Buddha Wisdom Seal wasn't a technique that specialized in attack, and thus it didn't cause much damage. However, it could reduce the damage dealt by the opponent without them noticing. Boom! Qing Shui was sent flying out very far from this attack. Thankfully, he had a strong body and the damage reduction from the Divine Weapon Flying Sword, in addition to the Emperor's Qi and the Buddha Wisdom Seal. Although he was sent flying out, he didn't receive much damage. Fourth step? After taking this step, He Tian's figure shot out toward Qing Shui and struck out another attack. How powerful! To think that the mortal steps could be used like this. He Tian's usage of the mortal steps was realms above that of He Yining. Suddenly, Qing Shui recalled that he had also learned the mortal steps. Although he had only mastered the first three steps, 
he decided to not hold back and use it at this point. Mortal steps, Ching Shui's learning ability was very strong and he took three steps very quickly. This was how Ching Shui was different. He wasn't in any rush to reach a higher level, but kept on cultivating the first three steps and then integrating them with his other techniques. This was so that he could take the three steps in the shortest time possible. Ching Shui's mastery of this technique was very high, and the first three steps were also the easiest to master. After staying in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal for about three months, he had managed to hit his goal. The mortal steps that Ching Shui performed were only left with a hint of their prior feeling. Only people who had mastered the mortal steps to an especially high realm would be able to tell that it was still the mortal steps. After completing the three steps, Ching Shui received a huge boost in his strength. He knew that he mustn't let He Qian finish his moves. He didn't wish to take the risk since he couldn't afford to lose should there be any accidents. After completing the three steps, Ching Shui struck out a stellar transposition. Boom! An attack that was like the Milky Way struck out and the brilliant glow oppressed even that of the suns. Although He Qian was considered to be quite strong at the fourth step, Ching Shui had also walked three steps. Furthermore, Ching Shui's defense was especially terrifying. The stellar transposition that could completely ignore the opponent's defense sent He Tian flying while spewing fresh blood, which drew a long trail in midair. This attack was truly too domineering. This was something that Ching Shui had thought of at the last moment after seeing He Tian battle. He hadn't expected that it would turn out to be so domineering, causing the stellar transposition's prowess to be over twice as strong as before. The prowess was truly terrifying. The mortal steps was truly domineering. After completing the whole technique, one would come with the aura as if they would be able to kill gods or wipe out demons. Ching Shui's figure flashed once again and performed the mortal steps a second time, taking another three steps. He then smashed out toward He Tian who was in midair. Primordial strike? He Tian had been seriously injured from the attack earlier and had lost the effect of the mortal steps. Ching Shui's follow-up attack was out to kill. Kid, don't you dare. He Lianba's eyes turned red. He Tian was the He Clan's future. After taking six steps of the mortal steps instantly, he struck out the one hand cover sky toward Ching Shui. Boom boom, He Tian disappeared, dying thoroughly. Golden light flashed on Ching Shui's body and he returned to his original spot. Paragon Golden Armor? After hitting He Tian, Ching Shui's mortal steps disappeared and his strength dropped. At this moment, He Lianba's violent attack struck onto him, out to kill. Chapter 2466, The Mortal's Regrets of the He Clan's Old Ancestor To think that just six steps of the mortal steps was enough to deal him an instant kill. Ching Shui perspired profusely. To think that the mortal steps was so terrifying. The He Clan's Old Ancestor wasn't just at the six mortal steps level. After all, even He Yining had reached the seven mortal steps level. It would mean that this old man would have to be at the eight mortal steps or higher. Ching Shui found it unbelievable that the old man was capable of performing the one-hand cover sky while using the mortal steps. He had already used up the Paragon Golden Armor's daily chance of fending off attacks. He Lianba was also stunned after he had thrown out this terrifying attack. After seeing Ching Shui unscathed, he recalled the golden light form earlier and said coldly, You have a treasure that can protect you, but I shall see how many times that treasure can fend off attacks. Saying that, he Lianba took another step forward. Seventh step? Everything happened within just an instant. Earlier on, he had only struck out one blow, so he reached the seventh step this time around. In that instant, his aura grew stronger. The seventh step was a critical point after the sixth step. It was very terrifying, let alone the fact that this time around, it was the He Clan's old ancestor performing it. Take another blow from me. With a thought, Ching Shui called out the Nine Continents Mountain and put up a block before him while he retreated explosively. Boom! The violent powers sent the Nine Continents Mountain flying. Buddha Wisdom Seal? Mortal Steps, instantly completing three steps. This time around, Ching Shui didn't attack but held on. The Mortal Steps could raise one's strength and if he didn't launch any attacks, he can sustain for a period of time. There were basically no one who would hold it off like this since the depletion would be very high during this period of time. Not many people could afford it. Die. He Lianba took another step forward. Eighth step? After taking eight steps of the mortal steps, he struck out another one-hand cover sky toward Ching Shui. This was a killing move and was also one that He Lianba was extremely confident in. 
Ching Shui's eyes narrowed and he suddenly tensed up. He performed the heavenly vision technique and circulated all of the qi's in his body to their extreme, performing taiki. Seemingly sealed shut, golden light flashed and a golden Buddha shadow appeared behind him. It was extremely big and tall, pushing out one hand slowly and heavily like a mountain, moving back slowly. Boom, the He clan's old ancestor was at the eight mortal steps, just a little bit away from the nine mortal steps. However, one would require an opportunity to reach the nine mortal steps. Due to this, the He clan's old ancestor was prevented from reaching the nine mortal steps for 200 years. Right now, Ching Shui's spiritual sense was extremely sharp. He had intended on using his trump, but had an intense feeling that he must feel He Lianba's strength for himself. He had the feeling that this was very important to him. Ching Shui's body was as if it had been struck by a mountain as he went flying backward, spurting blood. Injured? It was considered a serious injury. However, it was just that his internal organs had moved, which wasn't considered too bad for Ching Shui. He didn't even lose much battle prowess at all. Spring of life? Ching Shui took a mouthful, making up his mind to be a little extravagant. Ching Shui. When the two ladies saw Ching Shui spurting blood, they wanted to run toward him. Don't come over, I'm fine. Ching Shui put out his hand to stop the two ladies from heading over. Young man, I have to say that you're a great genius. To think that you've already managed to cultivate the mortal steps and reached quite a good realm. You have a broad perspective, but you must die today. Since you've learned our He clan's mortal steps, you must die. He Lianba shook his head slightly, as if feeling great pity. Do you really think that you're capable of killing me? Ching Shui smiled. Young man, if you know what's good for you, then return the things to our He clan. I can spare their lives. Otherwise, I'll let all of you die here. He. Lianba advanced once again, instantly taking six steps. You can't kill me, but I can kill you. Ching Shui took a step forward and a powerful aura threw out. Ten caves appeared simultaneously behind him, connecting into one line and shining in golden light. They looked like a huge golden disc that emitted a glow that was like that of the suns. You're really a demonic figure, but it's a pity that you haven't matured. I'll say it one more time. If you hand the things over, I can spare their lives. He Lianba bellowed solemnly. Many people had gathered around by now, including the Nine Continents Martial Association, the Nine Continents Cloth Manor, and the Nine Continents Clinic. Right now, all of them were feeling extremely agitated as they watched the battle. He's really too demonic. To think that he can force the He Clan's old ancestor to perform the Nine Mortal Steps despite the fact that he's at such a young age. He Tian was also an absolute genius, a genius among geniuses. It's a pity that he was killed by this young man. If only our Nine Continents Martial Association had such a character, we'd definitely be able to fight for the position of the Nine Continents Martial Association in the Nine Suns domain. There's no point in thinking about it. This young man is going to die. If you can save him, he might just join your Nine Continents Martial Association. Forget it. In Mortal City, Helianba can push back all the other sections. To be honest, Helianba's strength had been weakened a lot by Ching Shui. After he had taken the eighth step, a large half of his killing prowess had been weakened. Even under such a situation, in addition to Ching Shui performing the three mortal steps and Taiki seemingly sealed shut, he had been hit to the point that he had spurted blood. If it was someone else, without the divine weapon flying sword, Emperor's Qi, Buddha Wisdom Seal, and Trinity steps to stack up his defenses along with having other cards, there weren't many who would be able to receive He Lianba's attacks. There were few in the mortal city who could receive a compliment from He Lianba, saying that they weren't bad, and much fewer who could be complimented to be very good. So far, there had only been one who had been complimented by He Lianba as a genius and that had happened 200 years ago. This person was now also an important character in the Nine Suns domain. For Ching Shui to be able to be called a demonic figure by He Lianba, it wasn't a reprimand, but instead a compliment that he had surpassed a genius many times over. Therefore, the people around looked at Ching Shui and felt extremely strange. He Lianba's praise for Ching Shui as being a demonic character was enough to let Ching Shui's name to inscribed in the mortal city's history forever. It's no wonder he's so terrifying. He possesses ten caves and all of them are golden caves. Look at how all ten of his caves are connected. Furthermore, that tenth cave is very big. He is definitely considered a martial saint. In the future, he'll definitely be a martial saint. Martial saint, 
an extremely high level of existence. It's such a pity. An old man shook his head, feeling great pity. After he Lianba heard Ching Shui's words, his aura rose tremendously as well and several demonic beasts appeared next to him. Ching Shui frowned. This he clan's old ancestor was really wary, even when dealing against him. Roar roar. Next to Ching Shui, the dark phoenix, the primordial dragon elephant and Long Zhu Er appeared. Even the marionette, the primordial golden bear, and the dragon slaying beast had also appeared. Ching Shui didn't call out the rest. They would be instantly killed. He instantly applied his reinforcing abilities on them. To be honest, I really don't want to kill you. If you were my descendant, I'd wake up smiling even if I were in my dreams. I'd even be willing to die immediately if that were the case. He Li Anba felt extremely complicated. This person must be killed. If he wasn't, he'd be able to wipe out the He Clan with great ease in the future. Seventh step, eighth step, mortal slays God. Ching Shui formed seals and performed the three mortal steps, heavenly vision technique, and seemingly sealed shut once again, divine weapon flying sword. At the instant of contact, the divine weapon flying sword brought about a brilliant glow and pierced through the old man's throat. The entire place fell silent. Ching Shui spurred out a mouthful of blood once again and landed backward. After falling to the ground, he spurted out two consecutive mouthful of blood, as if there was no end to the amount of blood he had. Ching Shui stared at He Lianba. A person would definitely die after having their throat pierced, but he had this feeling that something wasn't right. Very soon, he understood why. Mortals Regrets? Chapter 2467, Life Hanging by a Thread, Using All Trump Cards. Mortals Regrets? Mortals Could Regret. A circle of glowing light rose up slowly and He Lianba's figure followed after the trailing part of blood brought by the flying sword. The blood in the places he Lianba passed by disappeared, returning to the place where he had been pierced, and everything returned to the original state. This is the He Clan's most terrifying mortal's regrets. It's a pity. Without this, that young man would have won. It's really unbelievable. To think that this young man can take He Lianba on to such an extent. He's too astonishing and should be stronger compared to those genius members from the divine sections. The golden light from that young man earlier on was also one that saved his life. This young man also have good things on him. Seems that even He Lianba will be feeling some pressure now. Although He Lianba recovered, his face was pale. The last time he had used the mortal's regrets was 300 years ago. He hadn't used it in a very long time and didn't expect to be forced into using it by a young man today. Regardless if the young man were to die or not, he would be considered to have lost. However, that didn't matter. He should kill the young man. Roar. He Lianba's nine demonic beasts attacked Ching Shui together. Emperor's Qi, Art of Pursuing, Buddha Wisdom Seal, Nine Palace Laws, Heavenly Vision Technique, Dragon Capturing Hands. The dragon slaying beast instantly appeared pierced through the head of one of the extremely powerful demonic beasts, and killed it on the spot. The dragon slaying beast, which had primordial blood lineage, was much stronger than it had been in the past. However, at this moment, the remaining powerful beasts on the opposing side charged over. Roar! The primordial golden bear fended off two of them. Ching Shui wanted to kill one more, but at this moment, two demonic beasts came attacking toward Ching Shui. He Lianba didn't move yet. Ching Shui's killing move earlier had been too terrifying and he was still finding it a little unbelievable. Divine Weapon Flying Sword? Since Ching Shui had already exposed the Divine Weapon Flying Sword, he naturally wouldn't hold back with it and went ahead to use it. He instantly advanced forward three mortal steps. The divine weapon flying sword's prowess was also closely related to Ching Shui's defense, thus this was something very important. The dragon slaying beast sealed up the escape route of the demonic beast that Ching Shui was attacking. This demonic beast didn't specialize in speed and as Ching Shui had selected this demonic beast to attack, the dragon slaying beast didn't make a move to attack. The divine weapon flying sword pierced through the demonic beast's throat, violent powers causing its extremely thick throat to burst. The small sword that was only three inches in length had extremely great prowess. Wherever it passed by, violent powers would crush the surroundings, creating explosions. Another one died. However, at this moment, a deep stifled roar rang out. The primordial dragon elephant was dealt severe injuries by two attacking demonic beasts. Ching Shui called back the primordial dragon elephant. 
Dark Phoenix kept spewing out Phoenix fire incessantly while Long Zhu Er put up a terrifying spider web and kept on using spider thread to obstruct and restrain her targets. The Divine Battle Puppet was also barely able to fend off a demonic beast that seemed similar to a black tigan. It wasn't going to lose for the moment, but it was too difficult for it to win over its opponent. Only the primordial golden bear was able to maintain the upper hand despite taking on two opponents by itself. Moreover, those two demonic beasts were Helianba's two strongest. Divine weapon flying sword, Ching Shui killed another demonic beast. Right now, the dragon slaying beast was already moving around to provide assistance. Helianba kept on watching as Ching Shui fought, not making a move despite the fact that his beloved demonic beasts had died. He wanted to see Ching Shui's attacks and speed clearly, as well as that small sword. 4. Ching Shui killed four demonic beasts. Right now, the demonic beasts on both sides had reached a balance. Of course, if Helianba continued to not make any move, Ching Shui could kill all of Helianba's demonic beasts at any moment. Kuka, an abrupt sound rang out and Ching Shui saw Helianba's figure getting bigger in size, emitting golden light. In just a short period of time, he became an enormous existence, as if his body had on a thick layer of battle armor, emitting a strange and mysterious power. Giant Golden Spiritual Figure Helianba used the Giant Golden Spiritual Figure, a terrifying battle technique. By this time there was no need to hold back anymore. The most important thing was to kill the opponent. Mortal Steps Helianba made his move, sending his enormous figure charging out toward Ching Shui, using the six mortal steps immediately. Then, without attacking, he lifted his leg, taking another step toward Ching Shui. He arrived before Ching Shui with just one step. Seven mortal steps, splitting heaven shattering earth. The huge fist was larger than the size of a small pavilion building, and it went smashing directly toward Ching Shui. That decisive attack, violent aura, and strong intent to press on forward caused this fist to surpass many people's recognition. A stream of golden light shot out, like a meteor chasing after the moon. This is too amazing. This punch is really one that can destroy the world. It can flatten mountains, cut off rivers, and even overturn seas. How is this young man going to take this attack? This is Helianba's strong background. Although the young man is very astonishing and demonic, the difference in their backgrounds is too huge. This time around, Helianba has given it his all as well. I didn't expect that this old guy had concealed so much of his strength. With a single thought, the divine weapon flying sword flew out once again, charging toward Helianba's throat. Right now, Helianba was like a mountain and the three-inch divine weapon flying sword was like a sewing needle that charged out with a brilliant glow. Giant golden spiritual arms. Helianba placed his two hands horizontally at his neck. Ding! A crisp sound rang out and the divine weapon flying sword sank into that extremely thick golden arm. Helianba's giant golden spiritual figure was really powerful and managed to block this attack despite the fact that the divine weapon flying sword had almost penetrated through the golden arms. Helianba frowned. The prowess of this tiny sword was too terrifying. Even his strongest golden arms were almost penetrated. Moreover, the internal injuries inflicted onto the golden arms weren't light. Thankfully, his golden arms were strong enough and were fine. However, if his other parts were to be attacked, things would be bad. If his neck was hit, he would probably be in deep trouble. Ching Shui frowned. Right now, the divine weapon flying sword's penetrating ability was very terrifying, with it possessing both speed and strength. With a single thought, the divine weapon flying sword attacked once again. This time around, it was again fended off by Helianba. Helianba blocked it with one arm and attacked with the other, splitting heaven shattering earth. Ching Shui's divine weapon flying sword once again pierced into Helianba's arm. However, Helianba's violent attack caused Ching Shui to spurt out blood furiously, and his face turned very pale. Helianba gritted his teeth, bearing with the discomfort in his arm. Earlier on, his arm had already been pierced once and this time around, the attack was almost on the same spot and had almost penetrated through his arm. It felt extremely painful, a pain that went down straight to his bone marrow, causing his body to tremor. Eighth step? At this moment, Helianba only thought of killing Ching Shui. With Ching Shui killed, everything would end. At this moment, Ching Shui stood up shakily. Under such a condition, Ching Shui wouldn't be able to block another attack.
he wouldn't be able to fend off this attack when the giant golden spiritual figure was activated. Ching Shui gritted his teeth and used the divine weapon flying sword once again. He Lianba smiled after seeing that small sword. He let down his guard, thinking that things were going to end soon. At this moment, Ching Shui's central palace seethed, and at the instant the divine weapon flying sword entered He Lianba's arm, the marrow nibbling golden dragon silkworm moved. At this moment, He Lianba's violent attack was about to reach Ching Shui. Ching Shui gritted his teeth, sensing a death threat. Boom! A plaintive cry rang out and Ching Shui was sent out flying from a huge force. He looked at that huge fiery red bird in front of him, on the verge of death. Fresh blood gushed out from its entire body like spring water, and the fiery red color of the blood seemed like burning flames. Chapter 2468, Phoenix Paradise, He Clan's Old Ancestor Dies. At the very last instant, Dark Phoenix stood in front of Ching Shui to block the attack. Right now, Dark Phoenix was very strong, but it was still unable to withstand the attack from the combination of the eight mortal steps and the giant golden spiritual figure. Dark Phoenix's body was strong enough and it had the ability to reduce the damage received, in addition to receiving the damage reduction from the divine weapon flying sword and other techniques. Even so, it was still in a battered state. Ching Shui's divine weapon flying sword had pierced into the same spot as the prior two times. The final attack had also been a full power attack. Its terrifying penetrating abilities pierced through the arm. Previously, the divine weapon flying sword had already gone halfway into the arm. It pierced into Healy Anba's throat. Right now, Healy Anba was the size of a small mountain and the divine weapon flying sword had entered Healy Anba's throat. However, it lacked the power to press on. Although it cut into Healy Anba's main artery, just the divine weapon flying sword was still insufficient to take Healy Anba's life with. However, at this moment, the marrow nibbling golden dragon silkworm entered the main artery through the injury left behind by the divine weapon flying sword. This was Ching Shui's plan and things went smoothly. It entered He Lianba's brain directly. Ching Shui didn't make any further attempts. After He Lianba had taken the form of the giant golden spiritual figure, his skin's toughness and tenacity had reached an extremely terrifying level. If the marrow nibbling golden dragon silkworm failed to enter, it would be a great joke. Therefore Ching Shui chose to let the divine weapon flying sword clear a path for the marrow nibbling golden dragon silkworm. It would be best if the divine weapon flying sword could kill He Lianba directly, but if it couldn't, then its mission would be accomplished after leaving an injury on He Lianba. The rest would naturally be left to the marrow nibbling golden dragon silkworm. Everything happened in an instant. Seeing that Ching Shui didn't die, he charged out toward Ching Shui once again, instantly performing the six mortal steps once again, preparing to launch another attack. Just then, an intense pain ran through his head, almost causing him to faint. His entire body stumbled. He thought it was a delusion, but that pain from earlier continued to drown him like waves, and his enormous body suddenly collapsed. Ching Shui didn't look at He Lianba, but instead at Dark Phoenix who was burning in flames. Dead. The blood that kept on spurting out started burning and within a short period of time, a huge fire broke out. Ching Shui had a terrifying resistance toward fire and didn't sense anything. However, everyone else couldn't withstand it. Ching Shui. The two ladies went up to pull Ching Shui. I'm fine. You guys go back and have a rest first. Ching Shui was feeling very upset. Back at the earliest times when the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal first leveled up, a huge Chinese parasol tree had appeared. At the same time, a fire bird had appeared. Back then, it was his most powerful demonic beast. Right now, it was still his most powerful demonic beast, but only after it had evolved not too long ago. Ching Shui hadn't thought of the possibility that Dark Phoenix would die. In Ching Shui's eyes, Dark Phoenix wasn't a demonic beast, but his brother. It would be in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal every day and had spent a longer period of time with him than the rest of the people around him. Ching Shui thought of how it had evolved into the Hellfire Phoenix, then to the Icefire Phoenix, before eventually returning to the appearance it had back when it was the Fire Bird. However, it had become a lot more impressive and domineering. Hmm? Why is it that the flames are getting increasingly bigger despite the fact that the Big Bird has been burning for so long? That's right. No wait. Why is there a terrifying vitality coming from it? Someone exclaimed. Hearing this, Ching Shui's eyes lit up and he felt extremely agitated. He thought of one situation the Phoenix Paradise. 
Ching Shui had always known that the Firebird had this Phoenix Paradise ability, but there was only a 30% chance of it happening. He had never thought of letting Dark Phoenix going through Nirvana. 30% wasn't a very high chance, but Ching Shui could only pin his hopes on it. Seething flames soared into the sky, right now, everyone could sense that this flame was different. Ching Shui was also sure that it was going through Nirvana. It was really going through Nirvana. Ning, an agitated bird's cry rang out. This cry was the most special sound that Ching Shui had heard before. It's said that the phoenix's cry was especially resonating, and could reach out beyond the nine heavens. This cry would definitely let all birds bow down to it. It had an unrivaled impressive aura. A huge burning bird that was the king of all howls soared into the sky from the flames and appeared in the sky as it cried out. Divine bird. Divine bird, it really is a divine bird. This is the most beautiful and majestic bird I've ever seen. Beautiful yet domineering. It's really very handsome. What a powerful disposition it has. Look at its crown. Ching Shui was naturally the most agitated of them all. Dark Phoenix didn't die and this was a blessing in disguise. Right now, it seemed that its blood lineage had improved. Most importantly, the aura it emitted made even Ching Shui's heart throb. Phoenix Paradise, when the fire bird received fatal damage, it would have a 30% chance to go through a fire bath rebirth. The successful rebirth would be like a transformation, with its strength being twice as strong as before. Dark Phoenix, who was in the sky, charged out toward the demonic beast the divine battle puppet was engaging, covering it in a flaming cloud. An agonizing howl rang out. No matter how the demonic beast struggled, the seething flames didn't extinguish. After several minutes, it turned into ashes, disappearing into the air together with the wind. Domineering, terrifying. What kind of fire is this? To think that it could burn up a demonic beast at the nurture god realm to the extent that it wasn't capable of retaliating. Look, Helianba has died. Someone shouted. Dark Phoenix's Phoenix Paradise ability had caused many people to temporarily forget about Helianba. They now realized that he had died. The giant golden spiritual figure might not necessarily die even if it were to fall. After all, no one knew what means Ching Shui had used to kill Helianba. He's really dead. It's over for the He Clan. Things are going to change in Mortal City. There were people who cheered and people who appeared sorrowful. Many people in the surroundings had left to make arrangements within their clan while concurrently trying to find out news about this young man's background. They wanted to know if they could be on friendly terms with him or find out if he would be staying here. With Dark Phoenix's participation, the battle ended very quickly. The Primordial Golden Bear was a heavenly technique that Ching Shui had comprehended from the Primordial Golden Bear's skull and because his mastery over it wasn't perfect yet, so he was unable to unleash its real prowess. If Ching Shui had achieved some success in it, he would be able to be like He Lianba, taking a form similar to that of the Golden Giant, but in the form of the Primordial Golden Bear. His battle prowess would throw off the giant golden spiritual figure by a few streets. However, the primordial golden bear was still very terrifying. Ching Shui could only blame his own lack of strength. The heavenly technique obtained from comprehending the primordial golden bear's skull was directly related to the master's strength. It was unlike demonic beasts, which could surpass the master's strength by a lot. The primordial golden bear at the small success stage was considered a little more terrifying. After all, it was up against Healy Anba's demonic beasts. Helianba's nurture god realm was definitely higher compared to Ching Shui's. For the primordial golden bear to be able to be on the upper hand against two of Helianba's demonic beasts, let alone his two strongest demonic beasts, Ching Shui was satisfied. In the end, even Dark Phoenix wasn't that much stronger compared to the primordial golden bear. If Dark Phoenix and the primordial golden bear were to change their caves, then their difference would be widen. It was a pity that the effects from exchanging caves wouldn't change right away, but would require a long duration of time. Otherwise, when Dark Phoenix that had used the advanced Paragon Pill moved to the 10th cave, his battle prowess would have reached a whole different level. This was Ching Shui's guess. He didn't wish to go through so much through. In the future, the primordial golden bear would definitely become the strongest for him. Moreover, with the increment of his nurture god realm, the primordial golden bear's strength would rise rapidly very soon, displaying the battle prowess of the ancient primordial golden bear. Kill? There were still many people in the He clan. Seeing that Ching Shui was seriously injured, a crazy idea popped in their minds. Even if Dark Phoenix was very terrifying, they couldn't care much. 
If they didn't kill Ching Shui and the others, it would be over for the He clan. At this stage, they might as well take the risk and fight it out. The people on Ching Shui's side would naturally not just stay idle. A chaotic battle broke out. Ching Shui frowned while the two ladies summoned the two demonic lions to be on guard. Black Ice Divine Worm, Thunderous Beast, Beast King Battle God, Massacre Battle God. Right now, Ching Shui didn't have much battle prowess and was starting to set up formations using formation flags. However, many people had their target on him, wanting to kill him to prevent future troubles. They weren't alone. Many influences in Mortal City also tried to blend into the chaos. Ching Shui's existence posed a great threat to many people. Referring to the Phoenix Paradise's experience slash process. Chapter 2469, He Clan Wiped Out, Great Yields. A chaotic battle had started so Ching Shui took out a Buddha-like golden lotus and swallowed it. Although his wounds recovered a little, his battle prowess had plunged by a lot. In the current situation, many experts were ready to make a move toward Ching Shui. He Tong Tian was the strongest in the He Clan after He Lianba. With He Lianba dead, if the He Clan could survive this, then He Tong Tian would enjoy the greatest status in the He Clan. He Tong Tian and He Lianba were brothers, but each had his own branch in the clan. However, previously, He Lianba's strength was definitely completely stronger than He Tong Tian's. In a normal situation, He Lianba's lifespan would be a lot longer compared to He Tong Tian's, so there wasn't a need for He Tong Tian to do much. However, no one would have expected that there would be someone in the mortal city who could kill He Lianba. Right now, He Tong Tian felt a little agitated. He was also the person who wanted to kill Ching Shui the most and was now taking steps toward Ching Shui. He wasn't as strong as He Lianba and he didn't dare to lay a hand on Ching Shui when Ching Shui was unharmed. However, Ching Shui was seriously injured at the moment. He didn't consider how He Lianba died. Right now, he was only thinking about how he could kill Ching Shui. Die. He Tongtian's figure suddenly reached an extreme speed as he launched a ferocious and domineering strike toward Ching Shui. Ching Shui had been paying attention all this while. With He Lianba dead, Ching Shui heaved a sigh of relief. He should be able to handle the rest of the people. Right now, his injuries weren't as bad as they seemed to be. Three mortal steps? Nine Continents Mountain? With a single thought, the Nine Continents Mountain appeared before Ching Shui, blocking He Tongtian's attack. Ching Shui managed to dodge the attack. Both the Dragon Slaying Beast and Dark Phoenix were very busy at the moment. The people from the Divine Palace had set up a formation that emphasized defense. With Ching Shui's unique abilities and reinforcements, his defense was very strong. Divine Weapon Flying Sword? Ching Shui took this opportunity to kill an expert who had launched a sneak attack on him. Ching Shui had no idea if this person was from the He Clan. Ching Shui didn't use the marrow nibbling golden dragon silkworm again. It couldn't be used too frequently since it was his final trump. The black ice divine worm's prowess was also displayed. Its domineering venom caused more than half the people to retreat from the battlefield. The chaotic battle became a lot quieter. At this moment, the massacre battle god's terrifying side was displayed. He had killed quite a number of people but was being hindered by an old man from the He clan. Rainbow divine dragon? Shen Wang's Rainbow Divine Dragon was still in its adolescent stage, but its prowess wasn't simple. There was also Bai Huang Fan's Sun Phoenix. Although its blood lineage wasn't comparable to Ching Shui's Dark Phoenix, it was still one-third of the Dark Phoenix's level, with about 20% of the Phoenix's blood lineage. Its battle prowess wasn't bad as well. The moment He Tongtian's attack didn't pull through, he used the seven mortal steps and turned into a human sword that slashed out toward Ching Shui. Pa? Ching Shui figure was shattered by this attack. He Tongtian was stunned as he looked at this scene in disbelief. His attack might be very powerful and Ching Shui might be very weak at the moment, so it wasn't impossible for such a situation to occur. However, he had the feeling that something wasn't right. Bloodthirsty demonic vines? Suddenly, a violent power rose up from under his feet and he knew that things weren't good. Bloodred demonic vines soared up, binding He Tongtian. Sharp reverse spikes kept on attacking He Tongtian's body. The bloodthirsty demonic vines was of the wood attribute in the Five Elements Divine Refining Technique. It was also the most terrifying move that Ching Shui felt that he had control. Even the current He Tongtian might not be able to get out of his control. Earlier on, the figure that He Tongtian had smashed was a replacement marionette. Back then, 
Ching Shui was in danger and he suddenly recalled those puppet marionettes he had purchased a very long time ago. Thereafter, he had refined replacement marionettes. However, he kept having the feeling that they couldn't be of use and he almost forgotten about them. He hadn't expected that they would be put to use at the current moment. Long Zhu Er threw out a big web directly and kept on using its spider silk to entangle him while the black ice divine worm kept on spurting out venom. An expert like He Tongtian was unable to handle this at all. He Tongtian was doomed. Without He Tongtian, although there were still many experts present amongst the people from the He clan, none of them were able to fend off the golden primordial bear and dark phoenix. Moreover, there was still the support from the dragon slaying beast, Long Zhu Er and the thunderous beast, the hill-moving battle god, diamond battle god, massacre battle god, the two ladies, the beast king battle god, Hao Tian, Ling Chen, and the others also started to control the battlefield. Toward the end, many influences in the surroundings disappeared. There were no more people from the He clan either. Ching Shui sat down weakly on the ground, but appeared to be very happy. He hadn't expected that he would wipe out the He clan in the mortal city. Everything was all because of some contradictions between He Fan and himself. This was how it was between cultivators. They would draw their blades at each other, sending blood splattering. This wasn't all. In the end, things would develop into a chaotic battle and one side would lose everything. Ching Shui thought of the nine mortal steps. Wealth gained from a battle were windfalls. The nine mortal steps was definitely a divine technique that could be listed amongst the top. When cultivated to a great level of proficiency, one would definitely be able to dish out instant kills. The formation wasn't bad, but this time around, Ching Shui saw some unique things that could break formations easily, regardless of what kind of great formations they were, even if they were ancient great formations. There would definitely be people or things that could break the ancient great formation. Strength was the most important. It was better to work hard and to get better. Ching Shui thought of the mortal's regrets, mortal's palm, and other attacks that the He clan's old ancestor knew. He hadn't been able to locate them. It seemed that there were some legacies that wouldn't be left behind in manuals. By right, techniques like the Nine Mortal Steps and Giant Golden Spiritual Figure shouldn't have been passed down through manuals either. It might be due to confidence, complacency, or some other reasons. Ching Shui led everyone to the He clan directly. With such a powerful influence suddenly being wiped out, there would naturally be a lot of good things. He didn't wish to let other people receive the windfall. Right now, no one in the mortal city would dare to stop him. With the dragon slaying beast, they didn't take long to move all the good things from the He clan. It was a huge influence with a long legacy. They had a lot of good things. There were divine weapons, miraculous medicine, medicinal herbs, minerals, and ores from divine areas. There were also quite a lot of unique things that no one knew what they were, yet they seemed unusual. This time around, they had gained a lot. Ching Shui and the others left the He clan. This massive manor suddenly collapsed, and this also represented the He clan's destruction. The mortal city's dominator that had a long legacy was suddenly wiped out. This was the Nine Continents. One who was enjoying an impressive life the day before might just disappear in the course of history tomorrow. After returning to the manor, Ching Shui recuperated his injuries and the two ladies set up the formation once again. They had gotten quite a lot of divine weapons and Ching Shui planned to temper everyone's weapons to make them better. Some of those miraculous medicine or medicinal pills could be taken directly, but some needed to be refined or improved by placing them in the treasure basin. Therefore, Ching Shui still had a lot of things to work on to improve at the moment. Ching Shui found three treasure pagodas amongst those unique things. They were all Perry Heavenly Fate Treasure Pagodas and Ching Shui gave them to the three people who had violent attacking prowess. Other than that, there were also some treasures, one being a medicine cauldron. It was a lot better than the one Ching Shui had been using to refine medicine for the past few decades but its name was very boorish Divine Medicine Cauldron. There were ten bones of the living dead medicinal pills. This made Ching Shui feel that the He clan really had a strong background. This was an absolute divine medicinal pill. As long as one hadn't died for over two hours and didn't lose his head nor been turned into a pile of minced meat, he could entirely be brought back to life. Even if he lost an arm, leg, or even his penis, the pill could grow new ones. This was how powerful this miraculous medicine was. Other than that, if a person who was in good condition were to use this medicinal pill, its powerful spiritual chi and medicinal effects could increase his cultivation, stabilize his foundation, 
and even allow him to attain a breakthrough to greater realms. Chapter 2470, Phoenix Feather Fan, Grade 600 Treasure Chest, Dragon Binding Ropes. There was a multitude of items present. Out of them all, one item stood out and seemed especially strange. It was a feather fan, with two distinctive colors, one half bluish white while the other half fiery red. Its appearance was extremely eye-catching, emitting a spiritual glow. However, the He Clan had placed it within an unknown thing. If it wasn't because of its strong spiritual chi, the He Clan would probably not collect it. It didn't matter that it looked good. There were too many things in the nine continents that looked good. After Ching Shui looked at it with his heavenly vision technique, he smiled, his heart racing. Phoenix Feather Fan? It was a paragon treasure, forged from the legendary phoenixes and rocks feathers. Only someone recognized by the Phoenix Feather Fan recognition could utilize it. With one flap, strong gales would blow, sending the target into the sky, unable to break free. The duration of constriction depended on the target's cultivation. However, no matter how strong the other party was, the opponent would definitely be lifted up for at least a split second. One can add an origin chi to attack, crushing the target in the strong gales. Of course, it would also be dependent on the other party's strength or if they had any defensive treasures. With two flaps, the target would be blown away for at least 1000 meters. One can add an origin chi to attack, causing the opponent to be sent off with the wind. With three flaps, Phoenix flames would be sent out. There could also be explosions, unleashing terrifying damaging prowess. With four flaps, fire would appear, turning the surroundings into a sea of flame. The terrifying flames had the ability to incinerate the world. Even an ocean could be set on fire. With five flaps, everything would return to calm. Everything can be blown away, flames could be extinguished, poison could be neutralized, unrest could be stabilized. Ching Shui was stunned for a moment. This paragon treasure was really good. It was a pity that it had to go through the owner recognition process. No one in the He Clan managed to be recognized as its owner. Otherwise, the fan would unleash terrifying prowess. If they were to use this against him in critical moments, he would become a live target. After seeing the requirement for the owner recognition, Ching Shui hesitated a little but eventually still decided to go ahead with it. He had initially planned on giving it to the two ladies when he saw that it was a pretty fan. However, he saw that the fan's prowess had a strong relation with the user. Ching Shui thought of his nine yang body as well as the yin yang fire art, which contained the primordial flames. He felt that this fan might be able to unleash terrifying effects in his hands. The fan was quite straining to use and ordinary people wouldn't be able to afford to use it. MMM, time to investigate the hundred treasure chest. Ching Shui was suddenly stunned. He thought of how the next level of the hundred treasure chest had opened up. It took a very long time for this level to open up and he had no idea when the next level would open up. He looked agitated toward the hundred treasure chest's rewards. Six-tiered hundred treasure chest. There were 1,000 aptitude pills, 1,000 potential pills, 1,000 growth pills, 2,000 divine square cauldrons, 2,000 divine weapon crystals, 300 cultivation pills, 50 super foundation building pills, 3 level up stones, 15 demonic beast blood strengthening pills, 3 pieces of god metal stones, 3 epiphany fruits. It was unlike how things were like in the past. There were no more talisman stones nor the heavenly limit soul stones. However, there were a lot more other things such as the super foundation building pill which should be something good. The level up stone was also excellent. The demonic beast blood strengthening pill was similar to what he refined, but there were only 15 of them. The god metal stone was a stone used to forge divine weapons and shouldn't be bad either. Ching Shui knew of the epiphany fruit. It was also called the comprehension fruit, used to increase one's level of comprehension. It allowed one's level of comprehension to increase by multiple times within a set period of time and had especially good effects for one to raise their cultivation realm and attain breakthroughs. Things like the aptitude pills were no longer useful on Ching Shui. Instead, it was suited for the others and could raise their cultivation exponentially. In the past, Ching Shui had used them himself as the others' foundations weren't as stable as his. Things were different now, he had the super foundation building pills. After taking a look, Ching Shui discovered that these things were of superior quality. They were divine medicine to cultivators, with their effects being more thorough than that of constitution nurturing. Just one per person could establish the person's foundations. 
there were no after effects from the aptitude pills and potential pills, and there was no worry of side effects caused by one's foundation being not stable enough. Ching Shui split up the things and planned on giving them out the next day. Right now, Ching Shui was planning to raise the grade of his divine weapon flying sword. He now had the divine square cauldrons and divine weapon crystals. Its grade was currently at 28 and he could increase its grade by 2 with 2000 divine square cauldrons and divine weapon crystals. Ching Shui knew about this long ago, the level up was quite fast. Grade 30? After being upgraded to grade 30, the divine weapon flying sword was already maxed out. Big Dipper Sword, Divine Weapon Flying Sword, Divine Earth Grade Artifact, possess terrifying attacking and penetrating abilities. Grade 30, allowing members from own party to receive 20% less damage. Effect will sustain throughout the entire battle. Increase 30% of self-recovery speed, all attacks and defense by 6 billion Deo Force. Increase additional damage inflicted by 6 billion Deo Force. Reduce additional damages received by 6 billion Deo Force, and reducing 30% of damage received. Divine Weapon Seal, activated. Can embed talisman stones. Attack, defense, avoidance, recovery, endurance, speed, flexibility, and violent strike increased by 10%. After the Divine Weapon Flying Sword had been maxed out, it can continue to be raised to the next level. It would be even more terrifying after it reached the Divine Heaven Grade. At the thought of this, Ching Shui thought of the three level-up stones. He took them out agitatedly, tried them out, and revealed a bitter smile. The level-up stones could only bring items up to the Divine Earth Grade. Its energy wasn't sufficient to bring items up to the Divine Heaven Grade. Ching Shui thought of synthesizing, but the failure rate was too high and three level-up stones weren't enough. At least ten level-up stones would be required to produce a more powerful level-up stone through synthesis. Therefore Ching Shui didn't continue to think about this. These three level up stones would be better off being used on blades. What should he use them on? Ching Shui was stumped. The level up stones could only bring items up to the divine earth grade at max, and each level up stone could increase the item by one level. Clearly, it would be best to use it on divine mystic grade. Otherwise, it would feel like a waste. Ching Shui had many treasures, but there were some which he had no idea if their levels could be raised. For example, the Soul Shake Bell, the Heaven Shaking Drum, Demon Binding Ropes, and the Soul Shake Bell. This baffled Ching Shui. The level of these treasures were very low and it was a waste to raise their levels. For the Soul Shake Bell, it was a matter of probability. Furthermore, Ching Shui felt that its effect wasn't that high now. It could be because the treasure's level was too low. It wouldn't be bad to increase the level of the Spirit Gathering Lamp and the Heaven Shaking Drum. He had no idea how much increment could be brought by increasing one level. Was it 10%? 20%? 50%? Double? This was something he felt torn by. The demon binding ropes wasn't bad and was a divine mystic grade basic tier treasure. It was actually very useful and most importantly, at the next level, it would become the dragon binding ropes. At the thought of this, Ching Shui leveled it up directly and without any further thoughts. Divine Earth Grade Treasures the grade of the divine artifact is different. Paragon treasures are divine heaven grade treasures. The phoenix feather fan from earlier was a paragon treasure. There were also differentiations between paragon treasures. Treasures have different practical uses and abilities. The special thing about the demon binding ropes was that its abilities were unitary. Therefore, its practical use was stronger than treasures that were of the same or of different grades. Dragon binding ropes? Divine earth grade treasure? Pouring in Origin Chi into the Dragon Binding Ropes could allow the restraining of the target, causing them to be unable to move. The duration of the confinement was until one's Origin Chi was left with less than 30%. The stronger the target, the faster the depletion of Origin Chi. It was a good thing. Ching Shui was very agitated. He had a strong necessity for such controlling ability. After all, with the Divine Weapon Flying Sword, the Dragon Slaying Beast, and the Stellar Transposition he would be able to deal instant kills after he had managed to cultivate the nine mortal steps. 